Hello, Big Team. Welcome to Lizzie Fay Loves Books. I'm Elizabeth, and this is going to be episode two of my Caldecott reading project that I did with my daughter, Emily, for our hashtag book a day in May project this year. We read the first three decades plus of the Caldecott winners. In the first video, I showcased the winners from 1938 to 1949. And in this episode, I will show you all of the Caldecott winners, medal winners of the 1950s. So we will start with 1950 and go forward. And I hope that you enjoy the video. Now, the interesting thing that I noticed from reading uh, 35 Caldecott winners in one month is the variety of artwork styles, the various types of media that was used to create the artwork. Sometimes I'm not sure what media was used. Sometimes I have a pretty good idea and sometimes I don't know. Uh, some books will tell you and then um, a lot of them don't. But I, you know, love to just read children's books, and I want to share with you my emotional reaction to the story, um, my initial reaction to the artwork itself, and um, just share with you the books that we read. So let's start with the winner from 1950. This was published originally in 1949. This is Song of the Swallows by Leo Politi. This centers around a young boy and his grandfather. They live in California and they have a festival each year centered around the return of the swallows. So the story starts with the swallows being there and then they leave and go off to migrate um, wherever they go for a good portion of the year and it shows the change of seasons and the expectation and the waiting for the swallows to return. And uh, it just goes through basically the year of their experiences with the swallows and without them, and then the return of the swallows the next year. It was a very enjoyable book. I'll show you a little bit of the artwork. Some of the artwork was full color, but then the majority of it was more muted, um, mostly neutrals in a, with a little bit of a pinkish gray hue. And um, it was just a, a very nice book, and I learned something about swallows. Then the next year, the winner was The Egg Tree. This is by Catherine Millhouse, and this is based on some traditions and customs of the Pennsylvania Dutch, which I believe are maybe the ancestors of what we know of today as the Amish people. And this centers around their Easter traditions and their um, traditions with Easter eggs and making an egg tree. And it was interesting. Uh, the people that are illustrated here um, are dressed in kind of a pilgrim, Puritan, Amish dress. It does say here in the acknowledgments that um, the stories and the traditions that are shown here are based on um, historical uh, traditions of the Pennsylvania Dutch people or the people of the Red Hills. And um, much of this information was um, gotten from the Historical Society of Berks County, Pennsylvania. So uh, anyway, it was an interesting book. And the artwork, uh, while very striking on the cover, was a little more subdued once you got inside the book, but um, beautiful detail and a very nice story. The next one was kind of difficult for me. Uh, first of all, I didn't think my library had it at first because it's called Finders Keepers and it just says it's by Will and Nicholas. So I kept searching Will and Nicholas and finally I looked up what their full names were and searched under their full names and that's when I discovered that there were several copies available from the various libraries in my county. They were just cataloged under the actual last names of the author and illustrator, not just their first names. So this story has a really good moral. It's about two dogs kind of fighting over a bone and asking everybody who the bone should belong to. And uh, it, it's kind of a folk tale with a moral at the end. But the 
illustrations, while very striking, were kind of hard to to make out. Like uh, this one, I think. Um, I was like, I, I couldn't figure out. Okay, I, I see. I see an eye, but what's the the eye of? And then finally, I realized. Oh, okay, it's a white horse. But you know, there was no contrast here, and I just had a hard time seeing it at first. And there were a couple of times like that. So uh, anyway, it's just a very interesting uh, art style, but um, you know, enjoyable to read once you kind of figure out what you're looking at. <laughs> this one I think we read when my girls were younger, The Biggest Bear. It's by Lind Ward. The story is very dated, but the illustrations are very detailed and just stunning, I think. They are monochromatic, but uh, so much detail. Just beautifully drawn and... Um, like I said, the story itself might trigger some things with animal lovers. It all comes out fine in the end, but, um, you know, it it was a sign of the times at that time. And so, you know, you have to look at it in the context of um, what part of history it was written in. Anyway, um, still... Uh, parts of it were very enjoyable, very sweet, but um, it's not necessarily a story that I enjoyed, but the artwork I thought was amazing. Now, Madeline's Rescue is book two in the Madeline series. So we, of course, did not start here. We had to get Madeline and read it first because I had never really read Madeline. And uh, now I want to read all of them because the story was delightful. But looking back at the artwork, um, the style is kind of messy. I'm not sure I'm a big fan of this style of artwork. It did illustrate some actual landmarks. And so I thought that was kind of neat. But um, overall, it's, it's not really my favorite style of drawing, but still very detailed and uh, in the story uh, of both of these, which is really good and uh, thoroughly enjoyable. Then the next one I thought was beautifully done. This is a Cinderella story by Marsha Brown, and I think it was in this Caldecott Celebration book that I read in addition to the Caldecott winners um, that talked about how she researched, you know, she wanted to illustrate a Cinderella story. So she researched the different source material because there were versions of Cinderella from different sources. And uh, ultimately she vetoed the Grimm's version, which was pretty barbaric. I think it said that the uh, stepsisters cut off some of their toes to try to fit into the shoes. So what she eventually did translate from was the French version. And again, this style is not my all-time favorite. It's beautifully done, and I love the colors, but I am a little more partial to uh, more realistic, and you know, this has the um, you know, the lines are not defined, but still very beautifully done. And, um, I do like the colors that were used in this. And, um, I enjoyed her translation of the story. I think this is the winner from 1955. This is uh, Frog Went a Courtin by John Langstaff. This is just a silly book. There is some full color illustrations on the first page, but then after that, it is basically a monochromatic green and gray neutral to illustrate the rest of the book, which makes sense since it's about a frog. There's a little bit of color uh, mixed in. But um, anyway, it was a cute book. As, as I recall, these words are based on a song that was passed down through the generations. And um, maybe at the time this was published, it had, it had maybe never actually been written down on paper. Uh, there is some musical notes in the back. And if we still had a piano, I would have played it so that I could see what the actual tune was supposed to be. But anyway, we enjoyed it, and uh, I, I think I made up some kind of a tune for it uh, anyway, just because, and uh, it was a lot of fun. 
Then the next one is A Tree is Nice. This, this is by Janice May Udry with, with pictures by Mark Simont or Simot, I'm not sure. And this is just a nice book about trees and their value and, uh, you know, what you can do in them and under them and on them. And um, just a really nice uh, little book about a tree and trees in general. So uh, very nice. The next one is A Time of Wonder by Robert McCloskey. And this is a story about some kids and their family who have a summer home on the coast and their uh, experiences over the summer, both when the weather is good and when the weather is bad. When a storm comes in, they talk about what they have to do to prepare for the storm. And uh, I thought it was very enjoyable. I don't know much, even though I live in central Florida, I don't know really much about living uh, on the coast. I've never lived on a coast. Uh, we do have to do some hurricane preparations here, but nothing like what you would have to do if you lived in a coastal town. And uh, I thought the artwork was very well done and it was an enjoyable book. And then the last one for this video, which is the Caldecott winner from 1950, is Chanticleer and the Fox. Now this is adapted from the Canterbury Tales and it's illustrated by Barbara Cooney. Now, I think I had to read the Canterbury Tales in high school, but I don't really remember much about them. But this was just a fun story about the uh, hens and the rooster at this uh, one particular family's house and how the fox tried to outsmart the rooster and, uh, and what happens in the end. So uh, it was very nice and the artwork was great and I enjoyed it a lot. Now the book I showed you that had uh, some information about the Cinderella story is called A Caldecott Celebration. It is by Leonard S. Marcus. There are two versions of this. This is the earlier version which features six different Caldecott medal winners from six decades. There is a newer version which features seven artists from seven decades and it's the same six from this book plus one more and um, I was saying early in an earlier video I don't know why you just didn't showcase seven different authors because that would have you know made each book more valuable to me you know if I had seen that oh this one has seven totally different authors to read about because it was very interesting each of the um, artists who are featured here, it talks about their journey to um, through becoming an illustrator and how they um, ended up illustrating the book that eventually earned them the Caldecott Medal. And um, it was a very, very interesting book. So this particular book features Robert McCloskey, who wrote Make Way for Ducklings in 1942, or perhaps it was the winner in 1942. Um, and then Marsha Brown, who wrote Cinderella, or The Little Glass Slipper. And then Maurice Sindek, who wrote Where the Wild Things Are. That was the winner in 1964. And then Sylvester and the Magic Pebble by William Stieg, which was the winner in 1970. And then Jumanji by Chris Van Allsburg was the winner in 1982. And Tuesday by David Wisner was the winner in 1992. And like I said, there's another version of this that adds another author, and I'm not sure who is featured in that book. This is the one that my library had, so uh, that's the one that I read. Well, I may as well show you Emily's favorites the same way I did uh, as I did in the last video. I showed her three different groups of books and had her pick her favorite of each group. And then I showed her all three of her favorites together and had her pick her favorite of the three. So I'm seeing an animal theme here. She did pick Frog Went a Courtin as her top favorite uh, of these three, but we have Song of the Swallows and The Biggest Bear uh, as runners up. I did point out Madeline's Rescue as being um, the in the top two of whichever were in the group of four that I showed her. So anyway, I'm going to say that Madeline's Rescue was her fourth in line. Anyway, it's always neat to see what her favorites are. And I would concur that Frog Went a Courtin was uh, also one of my favorites from this group. I did really enjoy the artwork. And incidentally, this library copy is signed by the author, which is pretty cool. Now, the uh, pictures are actually done 
by Fyodor Rojankovsky, and the author is John Langstaff, and John Langstaff is the one who signed this book. But there's actually more full-color illustrations in here than I thought. It looks like it's about every other page uh, are full-color, and then in between is the monochromatic green. Uh, very well done, very cute, very whimsical, and it was uh, a really good book. So that's it for this video. These are the 10 winners of the Caldecott Medal in the 1950s. If you missed my video showcasing the winners from 1938 through 1949, I hope you will check that out and stay tuned for more videos from my Caldecott project. I have already read all of the winners up through 1970, so I'll be doing one more video this year and then uh, continuing on with the project next year, if not before. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you're having a great day. Read a good book and God bless you.